Good evening. Thank you for coming to pray with me this evening. We um, will be beginning on page 115 with the opening sentences. My name is Teresa Newell. I'm one of the worship leaders at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in the Green Lake neighborhood of Seattle. Again, page 115. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Over on page 117. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 119, verses 25 through 48, and that begins on page 765 of the Book of Common Prayer. Again, 765. My soul cleaves to the dust. Give me life according to your word. I have confessed my ways, and you have answered me. Instruct me in your statutes. Make me understand the way of your commandments, that I may meditate on your marvelous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Take from me the way of lying. Let me find grace through your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your judgments before me. I hold fast to your decrees. O oh Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments, for you have set my heart at liberty. Teach me, O oh Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have a word for those who taught me, because I trust in your words. Do not take the word of your truth out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. I shall continue to keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I will walk at liberty, because I study your commandments. I will tell of your decrees before kings and will not be ashamed. I delight in your commandments, which I have always loved. I will lift up my hands to your commandments and I will meditate on your statutes. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave, him, gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you as is proper among saints. Entirely out of place is obscene, silly, and vulgar talk, 
but instead, let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be associated with them. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but it's instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by light, the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Here ends the reading. We will read the canticle that is printed on page 94 of the Book of Common Prayer, the Song of the Redeemed, on page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are the ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Again, he began to teach beside the lake. Such a very large, large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the lake and sat there, while the whole crowd was beside the lake on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and, it and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When he was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look, but not perceive, and may indeed listen, but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root and endure only for a while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the world, word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. 
they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is one of my favorite parables of Jesus. And with all parables, there seems to be some shocking part, some shocking event that causes thought in the listener. Being from the Midwest, I've seen lots of uh, farm fields. I'm sure many of you have too. And I know that a farmer is very careful with the seed. The farmer casts the seed on ground that is carefully prepared and ready for the seed. A farmer doesn't just throw seed away. And so for me, I think the shocking thing in this parable is the sower who throws seed willy-nilly here and there, wherever, not just in the prepared soil, not in nice even rows or furrows, not, not in any way that a farmer normally would sow seed. The sower throws the seed everywhere. And then Jesus tells us that the seed is the word of God, the word of God, the love of God, the understanding, the forgiveness of God. All of these things are so abundant that we don't have to worry about the scarcity of having to, to conserve the, the, the word, the seed. It, it's so abundant that it could be thrown everywhere. And we, who are supposed to be imitators of Christ, don't have to worry about who's worthy and who are the people who are on the path and who's in the, the thorn and we don't need to worry. Our job is just to scatter seed. Our job is to throw the love of God, the word of God, the peace of God, the understanding of God everywhere willy-nilly. We don't have the job of discerning who deserves it and who does not. That's between God and the receiver of our love. Our only job is to put the love of God out into the universe, widespread and everywhere. Amen. We will continue on with the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 120 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we'll go ahead and continue with suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health 
among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And we'll use the Collect for Peace on page 123. Please pray in your heart with me. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Over on page 125. O oh God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, I would welcome your intercessions and thanksgiving. Lord, I pray for peace and unity in our nation. I pray for all those who are suffering in this time, whether it be because they are ill or because they have lost jobs or resources due to the pandemic. Be with them and grant them your mercies. you join me in the general thanksgiving on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.